In smaller exchange environments, you may see only one person handling all of the administrative roles for an exchange organization. However, in larger scenarios, you may need to distribute to other individuals, other administrators, these various roles. So let's go over the role types that are in place for Exchange 2007. For starters, there's the Exchange Organization Administrator. This is the highest role that you can assign, and it gives an administrator the ability to configure and control all of the organization-wide settings, including the administration of edge servers, unified messaging servers, recipient objects, and so forth. The public folder administrator would be an individual who can manage top-level folder objects. They would be able to use the public folder management console, as well as run exchange management shell commands that relate to public folders. The recipient administrator would give a person the ability to create and manage recipient objects. So that would be users, contacts, distribution groups, dynamic distribution groups, and so forth. The Exchange Servers role would give a person the ability to handle server-related tasks. So from the Server Configuration Work Center, anything that relates to that section, that would include things like storage group and database control, client access server settings, hub transport server settings, unified messaging settings, anything under the Server Configuration Work Center. Then there are View-Only Administrators, which only allows a person to view items in the Exchange Organization tree. So they'll be able to click through the Exchange Management Console, and it's really just a basic set of permissions. And then Exchange Legacy Interop, this is not something that really applies to individuals. This is designed for interoperability with Exchange 2003 servers that exist within the same forest. So it allows for coexistence with Legacy Exchange servers. So I hope you found this informative, and we'll see you in the next lesson.